Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 13 of our FTP Skies Expert Mode Let's Play. Today guys, we have a few things planned ahead, just so we can get to space. The coming episodes, hopefully tomorrow, will be our adventure into space, getting all of this done. However, I do need to start up here and get to the LDP Ishis we were preparing for two episodes ago when we made polyethylene. Now, to do so, we actually need to use the crusher we made last episode to do this process of mage bloom fly fiber to blaze fiber to mana weave to marine fabric to protective fabric so to do so i went ahead and bone mealed a bunch of mage bloom seeds as we did get mage bloom seeds from something before and i do have my wordless sprigs farming them however they don't farm them fast enough at the moment i could place a bunch more but this is my biggest concern and the mana the source is full over here as i have relayed it down below However, if I give my crusher here, who's crushing a bunch of silver up at the moment, if I shift right click him, he has seven on him. Because I went ahead and set our silver back up down here, because we are going to need it for a lot of things coming up. Oh, I shocked myself. So I've set up silver down here. I made a bunch more mana powder. This is, I think, my second stack maybe I've gone through. Made a bit more mineral resin, and I set up some cinnabar just put down below, so it pulls in automatically. But yeah, so this is the exact same setup we had before, and I'm just making silver and then throwing it into my crusher. I probably shouldn't fly up there. I will lose flight. But yeah, I've gone ahead and made a bunch of silver. I'll give it to him once he's done with the mage bloom fibers. I'm not going to rush him. And then with the mage bloom fibers, what you do is you make blaze fibers, which is a fire shard and blaze powder in an imbuement chamber. And then with that, what you do is take mana weave cloth, you throw it inside of mana, like you throw the blaze fiber inside of mana pool, get mana infused strain. With this, you make mana weave cloth. And then you take this and put it inside latex. Yeah, you put it inside latex in a fluid encapsulator. And then you put that inside of polyethylene inside of a fluid encapsulator. So it's a bit of processing. So I've gone ahead down here. We'll go back, actually. And I've just set up a fluid encapsulator on top of this latex drawer here. I stopped it from going into this fluid mixer and I have it going inside this fluid encapsulator now. And for polyethylene, I set up a fluid encapsulator above this one as well. So we can use both of these to make our protective fabric in the upcoming seconds once our crusher actually processes it all and i also need to empty out our vault because our vault is full <laughs> of stuff and we don't need them anymore oh a loopy okay i need to grab this immediately so i got a loopy off screen i'll show you the rewards in just a second however in the most recent update of ftb skies they have made the loot bees actually useful <laughs> the more like the more you have the longer you have them the more stuff they drop where did my loopy go oh did i go too fast forward uh oh i want this loopy real bad come here buddy come with me up nope i don't want him there we go okay up and above now we'll wait because so they actually made the loot bees drop good items the more you get them and as you know we've gotten a lot of loot bees so that's a compressed block that's a godforged pearl this is a blue heart okay these are all the items i got last time but this is an ultimate tier installer by the way that's incredible incredible an apothic boss summoner oh, that's cool another compact machine another god forged pearl and uh stalite or budding selenite is there another one yeah another blue heart cool so that's all the items and those are pretty much exactly what i got last time except i got a thermal cell instead of a apothic boss summoner last time so yeah this is what i've gotten from two loot bees so far which is incredible <laughs> now the only reason i actually want my mob farm running consistently is so we can get source because right now we don't have a better way of generating source what we do but i don't want to do it until i have phytogenic insulators because phytogenic insulators will provide me with much higher quality and quantity of logs should i say so once i get logs that is well a way to generate logs at a high quantity then i'll move to the volcanic source link or volcanic source link i believe it's called and we'll use blazing archwood logs and simply set that up and it will give us infinite source for an infinite amount of time and we'll never have to worry ourselves about it however at the moment this is our best bet because this is once again free we get all of the resources recursively done through the reaper generator so i'm fine with doing that i just had to empty it out otherwise this guy will fill up with items and we just won't have anywhere to put them i could throw it all into a void chest to be honest but then we wouldn't get soul powder and we kind of do need soul powder to actually make this thing run so there's a bit of bit of work to do but it's only every every so often i have to come in and empty that thing out because i didn't set up a drawer system i really should have however no drawer system means a bit of work on this side also we've made 61 million fe out of this thing which could have gone into a storage cell i guess obviously but we do have our storage cell powering away over here and it should still be full i don't think i'm overusing power right oh no it is it is draining power i did not realize we might need to add another coil on there any 
saving it because yeah these guys are using up all of the power okay good to know we're gonna have to add another coil and like you remember if you remember we did make enough coils to have a four long one which means we should be fine you just grab our builder's wand oh i don't have it on the right mode <laughs> it's like wait what's going on and we should be good to make 980 fe per tick so this should fill everything up and then hopefully give us a buffer if not we're going to have to use these magnetite things and put them inside volatile redstone and well i do have volatile redstone in plenty at the moment do i yes i have 8,000, and each one of these require one so this just needs to heat up with more pressure it seems yeah it's not at the right temperature or at the right pressure to make more however i do have a bunch of acetaldehyde <laughs> made up because i have been putting silver in here as i get it so we do have a decent amount of acetaldehyde there's 2,000 in there 16 in there and 10 in there so we will have plenty of volatile redstone to go around and i have this filled with stabilized redstone for our pneumatic craft stuff later once we make it all however i do want to just focus on getting our space suit stuff prepared for right now and we'll get back into pcbs maybe later today made in later in this episode depends on how everything goes however i should have a bunch more mage bloom fibers in there we have 41 plenty i don't even think we need this many blaze fibers but we'll have as many as we can we'll go over here throw it into a mana pool get 30 and then you craft it like this how many cakes do we have by the way probably like 500 767 cakes <laughs> Yeah, I'm not too concerned about our cake supply anytime soon. But we'll take these man weave claws, throw them in our latex fluid encapsulator. This will make us the marine fabric, I believe. Yep, it'll make marine fabric. And then we'll throw it inside polyethylene. And we'll get ourselves hardened fabric. Is that what it's called? Oh, protective fabric. And then, yes, this guy is used to make the spacesuit. And you only need six, I believe. Yeah, you only need six protective fabric to make the spacesuit. However, like I said, I want to make myself the battle mage gear, which will require the protective fabric for tier three and well we'll make this eventually so it's just protective fabric emerald protocurs chorus around diamond armor and once we have diamond armor we'll have well once we get to the moon we'll have infinite diamonds to make diamond armor so once we have that done we can then enchant it with the moon gear and everything else and we won't have to wear a spacesuit in space we'll just be able to wear our best armor which is once again battle mage <laughs> however the next thing we actually want to do is still use our polyethylene from down below and make ourselves some ldpe sheets now these guys are used in the liquid crystal Crystallizer, which will help us get better fuel, which will mean more rotation, and it'll help us make the fabrication matrix in the dissolution chamber. Dissolution chamber will make simple machine frame, which is used for something we need, I believe. Yeah, the base for the, well, the base, and these are made to make fuel projectors, which we need to go to space. So we actually do need LDPE sheets made up, and we don't need the liquid crystallizer at the moment, I don't believe. There's, I don't think there's any rush on this guy, because once again, we're not going to be using to infuse our biodiesel at the moment. I think that'll be waste because we do have 648 biodiesel still and i believe this number is climbing it might be going down however that guy is perfectly fine as is we're not using the rotation as i have turned off our well system right here for our items and these guys are just building up once again we'll speed them up once we have diamonds i had fixed the dust on the back here by the way it is chiseled sandstone with a hammer not just regular sand so that guy is now back to working however like i said i want to get ldpe sheets so we can make this stuff here and we only we need three of them i believe we need two of them well seven no sorry six of them for now and i should have enough plastic to make at least two i have five plastic okay well we'll make the two for now so we can go ahead and make the dissolution chamber so just down in our polyethylene we're making ourselves adp sheets and we'll take these back up top and we should be able to go ahead and make a dissolution chamber however i'm not entirely sure if we can precision matrix machine frame aluminum gear oh we'll need an aluminum gear and what else is there oh an no, electrum gear as well okay do we have electrum i do have electrum and an aluminum but what else do i need do i have the rest of it yeah i have the rest of everything made up in there awesome so i'll grab a small cog and we can connect our thing back up over here and we should be able to hopefully this isn't overstressed i oh, overstressed what exactly is overstressing it oh it's because i added a new uh, magnetite gear on this thing i forgot yeah that won't exactly work we'll turn this off just temporarily hopefully our entire pressure doesn't lose out down below 
and I will turn this guy on. There we go. Go fast enough and it actually works. <laughs> Craft it and turn it back on. Okay, we should be fine. Nothing should have broke down below. Hopefully not at least. Oh, I do need to remove this. There we go. Hopefully nothing broke <laughs> because if it did, that would be very disastrous and we won't have pressure and then stuff will start losing and then it, I'm not sure if it will work. <laughs> oh, that was a lot of quests. Okay, but we got our dissolution chamber and now we can make ourselves our simple machine frame, which is more latex. So good I didn't make it all. Duroplast, steel, and a gold gear. Please tell me I have a gold gear made. I do not. Okay, well, I'm going to have to make myself a gold gear. I wonder if I can make the new machine yet. Can I make a multi-servo press? Bronze, Constantine, machine. Oh, I can make myself a multi-servo press. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do this because all I need is an engineer's blueprint, which is pretty simple to make. So we'll make this. We can remove all of these items so we don't get confused. Any Constantine gear. And to use this, I need a metal press indicator, which is made with the engineer's blueprint. Cool. Should be simple enough. Just some blue dye. So if we come over here to our engineer's workbench, I'm just going to take all this out, throw in the metal press gear, and grab ourselves a gear press. I will also want a plate press eventually. I don't think I'll need any more of these. Oh, we'll probably want a rod and the wires actually. So we'll grab ourselves some more steel plates. We'll grab the wire press and we'll grab ourselves the rod press as well. I don't think we'll need any more in the future at least. And we'll want this back. Cool. So that should be all the presses we need eventually, or well, for now at least. I don't think we'll be using any more. And I want to make myself the multi servo press. So that's bronze and Constantine. Bronze is copper and tin. We can just throw that in our induction smelter over here, which we made last episode. That should make bronze very, very slowly. And I'll have to hook this guy back up for now and make myself, what is it? Two Constantine gears which I should have Constantine made up. If I don't, I'm going to have to make some. I do, luckily. I turned off. Oh, there we go. Got to go fast. There we go. Cool. Done. And flip. Yeah, once again, we do really need oil and then to infuse it with force eventually because once again, our bodies are engine just aren't keeping up anymore. And then eventually we can also use, what is it? I believe you can use steel, not steel, uh, oxygen from mechanism and you can even make them even better. So we'll do that. Now with our bronze and Constantine, we can go ahead and do this. Okay, and we'll place our multi-server press down here. We'll get an MB connector, connect it back up like so. And we should have a multi-server press filling up with energy. I wonder if this guy will ever backlog. I mean, hopefully it will, because this guy filled up pretty fast with power. So I'm not too concerned about it, but we might just be really low on power there. However, this guy should be fine. And we can go ahead and start making gears this way. And what do we need the gears for? It was gold gears, right? So we'll grab the gear and we'll grab ourselves some gold. And it'll take a bit of time, but it won't require us to make gears on this guy anymore, which is really nice. And we'll use these to make simple machine frames, correct? Which also need latex. So I'm coming down here to actually use our steel cables, which need to stabilize redstone. And these guys shouldn't use much, I don't believe. I think they only use like one millibucket or something. Use 10 millibuckets to make a flux duct. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and make ourselves a bunch of flux ducts. And this should allow us, if we ever get power back upstairs, that is, to make, well, infinite, uh, not infinite power, but powered latex uh, fluid instructors. So we can actually make this faster. So I've gone ahead and set up a double here. So I have a a block placer down here as well as a block placer up top and now we have 20 that should be enough to connect all of this together if i do two on this side like this and up like that and also come under here and do two like so and then if i do this side as well and then connect it above maybe i think that'll work okay now these will slowly fill up with power and if I throw speed upgrades in them eventually, they will actually work better. I wonder if I have any add-ons. Oh, I did get some speed add-ons from that one quest. So I can actually throw speed upgrades in these and they shouldn't, they don't use that much power. So I can get more latex per second from these guys. Don't want to shock myself. And yeah, these are just rapidly filling up now. Holy cow. Okay, no. So this should produce us plenty of latex. And what we'll do is we'll connect them all this way. And I will, hmm, I guess I can wrap it underneath here. This doesn't look the prettiest, that is for sure. We'll do something like this. Probably should have done this above ground. So I didn't have this ugly monstrosity of a mess. And I do kind of, can I fly? Yeah, I can. Okay, cool. Grab my concrete back. And then what I can do is do a middle section here, fluid drawer, cover that up. And if I extract all these, 
Why do I have onions? Where did I get onions from? We already have 6.7 buckets of latex just from that. And we'll add all these into here. And that should be good. And then we'll also throw our dissolution chamber down here. We'll throw our latex processing unit down here. These will fill up with latex as well. This one should. Oh no, he needs a pusher. Right. So he'll need a pusher upgrade to go into that one. Awesome. So yeah, this guy's filling up with latex. This guy here will slowly fill up with latex. And then yeah, our fluid drawer will act as a buffer if we ever need more in here. I'll throw a drawer on top with an aqueous accumulator right here, I guess. It's going to be a little jank. However, I can just throw an aqueous accumulator and this guy can pull directly in from this side. And with our latex process unit, we actually do need to power this thing. I did forget about that. So yeah, now we have automatic tiny dry rubber. We have automatic latex and we have our dissolution chamber here set up so that we can make our simple machine frames, which we should have everything for now, now that I have latex set up. Oh, I do want to lock this just so nothing accidentally gets in there. So if I grab the gold gears we just made and I only need seven of these, I'm going to make seven simple machine frames. So one of each or like this. I need, sorry, two of each of these guys, one machine frame, one gold gear. I have a bunch of machine frames made up. I got more latex made from this guy and it just keeps pumping it out. And if I do like this, I should be able to just throw all that in, click lock the input. And then once this guy crafts, I can actually speed it up. Once this guy crafts, I can just shift right click all that back in without having to worry about separating it. And yeah, this guy will automatically make one of each. And then later on in the future, the quantum assembler will actually make two of them. So that is a bonus. However, in the dissolution chamber, you only do get the one. However, with that, we should be good. I also don't want this to be on 4x speed because it, it will use all of my power, but we should be fine once it runs out. Yeah, it should fill back up on power as it works. But with five of these, we are fine to make our bases, which are just pneumatic cylinders, redstone torches, mana diamonds, and reinforced stone slabs. And we need four of these alongside our mechanical crafter for to make miniaturization projector dishes, which are stealing its hardened glass and sprinkling glass panes. These guys are just sprinkling shards around burnt glass. Oh, okay. So we actually have a use for our fire essence outside of auto smelt. That's locked. I throw glass in there. We'll make burnt glass. And then, yeah, perfect. And we'll make all of it into sprinkling glass. I don't think I'll need this much. However, it's fine. So that's that crafted. I will go make some more simple machine frames and we'll get ready to craft our miniaturization crafters. Now, while I'm getting everything gathered up here, I'm glad I didn't use all my diamonds to make diamond armor or anything of the sort. However, before the moon, there's actually an easy way to get to diamonds once you're into pneumatic craft, and that is simply using coal coke inside of a blast not a blast filter. Inside of a pressure chamber, you can put a single block of cold coke inside of it and get a diamond. And well, cold coke is very easy to get. All you just need to do is throw coal inside of a, a coke oven, right? So it's actually really easy to do. However, I've never, I never set up automating our coke ovens. Like I didn't have creosote automatically pumped out, cold coke being moved around. I could have. However, by the time I actually get to space, I'm never going to need to make diamonds inside of a pressure chamber again. And once again, our pressure chamber isn't even set up anymore. Anywhere. At the moment, we will set it up eventually, I guess, down there right on the edge where our pressure is actually like coming out the other side. We will set up our pressure chamber, not alongside our pressure wall, but like on this side over here, right? We will eventually set that back up. But for now, what I'm doing is just getting everything here prepared. So I made some cylinders, which is just plastic, cannon barrels, and compressed iron. Very easy. The machine frames we just made, man of diamonds. And then I just need to write some torches. And then these guys, well, we already made the glass shards. And I'll get the rest of that all made up. And actually, I don't think we've made this yet on camera, but hardened glass is just quartz, obsidian, and sand inside the induction smelter. So very simple as well. So I'll get everything prepared and we'll be back once I've done all that. In preparation for what I were going to do later, as you see I'm crafting up everything still, I just want to go ahead and use these coke bricks, or blocks of coke, sorry, and give them to our crusher spirit. Now that is because we'll need HOP graphite dust, and this is the only way to actually get it at the moment, unless, yeah, no, I think this is actually the only way to get it in the game, is you give blocks of coke to your crusher, and then these will be used to make coke oven or coke brick mm, wow these will make hop graphite ingots which can be smelted or sorry pressed into rods the graphite electric rods and we'll need three of these for our arc furnace so i'm going to go ahead and give my crusher the blocks and this should give me return of at least 12 i'm not entirely sure However, that is just some small preparation I'm doing in the meantime while I have, what are these cooking up? Oh, I have my hardened glass cooking up in my induction smelter over here, which should be done by now. Yeah, it's done. Awesome. So we can actually go ahead and make everything now. They're all crafted up and we can just combine these in our crafting table 
and get field projectors. Now the way these guys work, if you've never used field projectors, which is, wouldn't be too surprising as compact crafting probably isn't the most popular mod. I might want to move my crafters around. However, if I count nine out, so one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'll place it here and I'll do three up and I'll place my field projector down like this. To know where you have to place more, you just right click. Now what I want to do is I want to take the third furthest one. And if I do this, oh sorry, if I place down my next field projector, yeah, it is in bounds. However, I do want to move that one back. I thought nine out. I meant I counted nine out, yet for some reason I placed it 10 out. However, I do want these nine out. So we'll go one over and yeah, we'll reset these to nine out and then they will be at the right distance so once again just right click and you'll see whether you have to put them this lines up nicely right click and then the last one's over here and then it will make an orange sphere in the middle like this and all crafting blocks will be put in the middle basically so if we look up space plate and block the one we had to make earlier right if we look this up and look at miniaturizing crafting basically what you have to do is you build this structure inside of the orange bounds starting in the center so you use this as your center block and you build out around it and if we look at it again you you basically build it as instructed and then you just throw whatever this item is throw this item into miniaturization field to start crafting you chuck it in and it will craft the item so we'll go ahead and do that once we have this set up or once we need this however i did want to go set it up ahead of time just so we have it now the last thing i want to do for this episode is actually go ahead and make the arc furnace and automate steel because steel we're going to need for a lot of things here i'll just show you so with steel we do need steel plates and steel plates should be right here. Yeah. And the steel plates are used in the pressure chamber to make space material. Space material, you need eight in the assembly line controller, which we'll set up next episode. And then hopefully get ourselves everything made up to get to space that episode. We'll see how it goes. However, space plating is made in there. And then you need space plating for everything to make the space plate blocks. So you need a lot of steel, basically. And we have the aluminum and copper already made thanks to our ore processing. So we planned that ahead. However, I do need a lot lot and a lot a lot of steel so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set up our metallurgic infusers to make us a simple line of metallurgic infuser drawer metallurgic infuser drawer steel very simple now to do that i need to make the arc furnace first so i'm going to go ahead and gather all these materials i'm going to take our reinforced blast bricks from our what is it over here i'm going to take all these this should be empty right yeah it is perfect so that's all the blast bricks done very simple and i'll gather the rest of the blocks we need and we should be able to make ourselves an arc furnace so I've gone ahead and crafted everything up for our arc furnace and we can go ahead and grab our schematic cannon and throw this guy down and we'll just throw a schematic table here, throw a chest down beside it and we will get ourselves the arc furnace. Arc furnace, there we go. And we can go ahead and place this guy down like this. Oh no, I do want to rotate this guy. So left alt and I want to rotate and then we'll scroll. You know what, I think it's fine there for now. We'll probably have a different spot for this later on, but I do just kind of temporarily need it. So we'll go ahead and place that there, throw it in our cannon, throw some gunpowder in here. And with a right click on the cauldron, we now have our arc furnace. And yeah, the three power outputs are right here, or the input, sorry. I'll go ahead and connect three flux ducts, do a wire connector in the middle and connect that guy up to power. And this guy should slowly start filling up with power. However, it will not work without graphite rods. So if you remember just earlier in the episode, what we went ahead and did is gave our crusher over here some coke bricks. I had to give him two more, not coke bricks, coke blocks, sorry. And that let us get HOP graphite dust. Here's two more. Awesome. And what we can do with this is smelt it up. I've already smelted up 10. However, we do need 12 total. And if I grab the rod, now sped up, this guy makes graphite electrodes. These graphite electrodes are needed in these three slots up here for our arc furnace to actually run. Now we can just chuck them up there. These guys have way more durability than they used to. The devs fixed it because there's no way to automatically put graphite rods in here. Like you see the graphite rods here, technically that's what they, they are. Like if those are removed, they stay there. Oh, sorry, they get put there. <laughs> So you see the graphite rods, so you'd assume you should be able to put them in through that, like this little block here. However, you cannot. So unfortunately, there's no way to automate it. This input right here is for this section. This input over here is for this section over here. The output is grabbed out through here. And then if you're making steel or something, the slag output is from the back. However, we won't be using this for steel, so it's very easy to automate. We'll have input input for regular and then alloy section. And then we'll have an output just on a chest right there. 
But for now, what we want to do is we want to make ourselves eight signalum blend. Perfect. Okay, there we go. And we don't have the power necess necessary to do multiple inputs. So I'm just slowly going to do it in one. And even that won't hold up. It doesn't seem. We'll be able to make one before it runs out of power. It should, right? Yeah, okay, it can make one before it runs out of power. Yeah, we don't have the best power source at the moment. Maybe what I'll do is remove these flux ducts and just do HP directly on it. Oh, that's not the right spot. And do HP directly on it. That should be fine. And now I should be able to keep that in there without this running out. Yeah, it seems like it. Okay, that's pretty good then. Oh, no, it's starting to run out now, but slowly, not as fast. Now with our signal and gears made up, I should be able to make two metallurgic confusers. Anyways, I do want to go and do metallurgy confuser like this. I need two inputs, so one for coal, one for iron. And also, I made these backwards, by the way. Oh, not the elevator. I made these backwards. I don't like the look of them with the white and then the gray in the middle, but it is what it is. We have them, and I wasn't going to make any more. Output, input, sorry, input like that, output, input there. And then this, actually, no, these need to go up a block. I forgot. So we'll do input like so. Okay, input, output. Input, output, input, output. Yes, this should make more sense. So this one will have iron. This one will have coal. Coal will go in both of these. This will output into here, get inputted into this metallurgy confuser. This metallurgy confuser will spit it out into this drawer, which will force it into this furnace here, which will give a speed core to. And this will make steel down here. So if I connect these up with power, which I've gone ahead and made some flux ducts, because these don't require as much power as our arc furnace here, I can go ahead and throw a connector there and use up our last HV wire. So we'll have to make more of those in the future. So I'm back with all this set up with some pusher and filler crates. I probably want to block down here just so it looks a bit nicer. And it's a little square of metallurgic infusing. However, basic concept, I have iron in this guy, coal in this one, like we said. Coal is being pushed into both of these extra inputs. And the way you do that is go to side config and set extra to yellow. An easy way to get to extra yellow is just right click. Left click will move one way, right click will move the other. So one right click to get to extra. And if you do one right, one left click, you get input, two left click you get output so that's just a bonus tip if you don't know also i set all these to auto eject for items specifically so both of these have auto eject items on this guy extra yellow blue output input right so this guy here is pushing upwards into this metallurgy confuser this guy is pushing down in north so north and down into these two to fill them with carbon this guy here is taking the enriched iron and being pushed upwards into this here steel dust will be pushed into this one now see as it goes in it'll be pushed down this guy will be forced in and then there will be a puller upgrade in here once the steel's in and we'll have automatic steel so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to fill this guy with iron probably like five five thousand iron maybe and eventually this will all cook through and we'll have five thousand steel cooked up automatically and we can just leave this passively never have to worry about it not make coal coke fill up the arc furnace or sorry fill up this furnace with coal coke or coal coke dust actually the arc furnace requires it requires coal coke dust so you need your crusher to make that or using an approved flat furnace we don't have to fill that up with coal coke either this is completely passive very compact too it requires a three by three by one like oh sorry i guess it does need power in the back but other than that this is very compact can be sped up even more with speed upgrades in your mechanism machines and yeah i'm going to be using this from here till the very end of the pack as this is the most best way to make steel i'm going to be honest and it is very simple to set up just a bit of pusher and puller upgrades and some drawers and if you've watched the series from any more than an episode, you know I love pusher and puller upgrades as well as drawers. They just make everything so much easier, very compact, and it all it really just looks nice having drawers to, as buffers in my opinion, especially the fact that you can frame them with whatever you'd like. So like I said, I'm going to fill that up with like five, 6,000 iron, and we'll just AFK here and have a bunch of steel while we're doing other projects on the island. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a bit of a shorter one. I say that every time, but it always ends up being around the same time length at the end. However, it was a bit of a shorter episode in the fact that we didn't get as much done as normal. However, we have everything we need set up to prepare ourselves for next episode to get into space. I have all this steel production set up. I have my polyethylene down below set up. I have all the resources behind me I'll ever need to get to space, that is. And we have plastic and latex and our fuel projectors all set up. So like I said, everything is all ready for us to get to space. However, if you guys did enjoy this episode, leave a like down below. If there is something you'd like to teach me or something I taught you today, leave it in the comments. I would love to hear it. And if you don't want to miss any future uploads or any other videos from me, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.